And you sit in there thinking, how can I just create some quick animation? How can I control my spacing? How can I make my life easier, myself faster, and my work better? I don't know, but I have my workflow that I've been using for a number of years now, which to me has felt like I've gotten way faster, way more efficient, which in turn allows me to then be better at my animation because I have more time to spend on it because I'm not wasting time pressing buttons on Animbot. I'm using hotkeys. Let's take a look at my current favorite workflow for feature animation. Here's an early one for you. This is essentially the workflow I use for animating my feature animation shots. And it requires a lot of hotkeys. The hotkeys I want to set are move. You will already, in Maya by default, have these set up. Move up, move down, move left, and move right. I'm actually going to make an additional hotkey for all of these. You just go in, press this little arrow, make additional hotkey. Just because I don't want to remove that functionality, but I'm going to set these to Alt Wazda basically, the gamer hotkeys, in order to move those native Maya hotkeys onto the left hand side of the keyboard. The reason I map everything to the left hand side of the keyboard is because I use this setup. I find it's a pretty good compromise between using like a custom key selector like X keys and just using a normal keyboard it means I can easily go into a studio for that and to bring my own keyboard in and I like it I've been using it for many years now and there's a link in the description to this keyboard if you do want to pick it up in order to help this process like a lot of things I want to go ahead and open up Animbot and this video isn't just for people who use Animbot though if you're a serious animator, you might want to consider getting Animbot. When's Alan going to give me a discount code? Come on. I love Animbot. I use the hotkeys on Animbot. It's very easy to set up this stuff not in Animbot. You can also set up this stuff in Blender. Blender does have the tweener and it does have blend to neighbors. There are ways to do it for free in Maya as well. There are many, many tweeners, tween machine. That's the only one I can think of, but there's many other tools that have tweeners included and blending between poses and i think houdini even just added blend to neighbors which is pretty amazing maybe houdini animation would be a good video to explore and anibot has this really useful hotkeys section where you can set a lot of hotkeys for maya and the ones i want to set and you can do this outside of anibot all three first of all on the number one i'm going to set tweener minus 100 percent on number two i'm going to set blend to neighbors minus 15 percent on number three, I'm going to set tweener one third. Number four, tweener two thirds. Number five, blend to neighbors 15%. And finally, number six, tweener 100%. And just hit apply. And there's a couple others I wanna set up as well for this workflow that will help. I wanna go to recommended hotkeys. You can see I already have a bunch set up. I do have reset pose and a few others that honestly I don't use that much. The main ones I want to set up are smart go to previous keyframe, and smart go to next keyframe. The benefit to using this over the native Maya hotkeys is that this doesn't store the undo when you want to flick between your keys and then undo the last thing that you did. You don't have to undo all of that minor benefit, but you may as well swap your native Maya one to that if you do have Animbot. If not, use the native Maya one, that's fine too. Let's go into the workflow after we have a hotkeys set up here. As with my last video, I've got a cube. It's just a good way to explain some animation things. I'm just gonna go ahead and move it. We get another key pose and we'll even rotate it as well. So we can see the pink side. So we have two keyframes. I'm flicking between them using C for next keyframe and X for previous keyframe. What that allows me to do is just see the contrast between my poses rather than playing through a timeline. For example, if you had that in auto tangents, you could go like that and see, but I don't want to do that. I want to stay in step tangents and see things on their keyframes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go a few frames along. It doesn't really matter where we're going to do our timing later, but for now we're going to do our spacing. Now where the tweener hotkeys that we just set up in Animbot come into play is we're just going to go a few frames along. We're going to hit a tween using number three, which gives us the same thing as hitting this button here on the tweener. Equally by pressing four, I'm using this button and it gives us the same result. That's great. I'm gonna use control alt D, which is what I have set up to delete keys. It's another handy one. Now, if I went in and just set all of my tweens like this, things would feel very samey in terms of my spacing. What I actually like to do is set that as a basis. So I have a key there and then I go in and work on that. I adjust things, I move things around. So say I, I wanna do this, I just wanna adjust the spacing a bit so that it doesn't go quite fast or it's doing some weird rotation. But what I can actually do is I can come in and set my 
tween of one third. And then I can go in and hit two, which blends to the previous key, which is the same as holding shift and hitting this blend minus 15. I hit that a couple of times. I can just come in and hit this a few times and click between them and just decide how much spacing I want for that key. And it's very easy to sort of use the one third tween and minus 15% blender to create that. And in the same way, we can come over here and set an ease in using two thirds tweener using port and do the same where we sort of flick between our poses and decide what spacing we want between them and just hit five to get a bit closer. You can just spam it a load if you want it super close or if you want it completely to that side, I'll hit six, which literally just takes this value and copies it here. It's the same as pressing this button on the Twin Machine. Further to that, pressing one gives me the same value as the start. I can quite quickly go in here and actually without using a mouse or a pen tablet, in this case, I can have my hand up here and I can, I guess I've not done this before because I haven't had a need, but I could if I wanted to have my hand up here relaxing, go about creating some animation just by flicking between my keys and then holding control and C just to move along and set another key. And if you've already got a lot of poses set, like breakdowns and things like that, this can be a great way to finish off your animation. If I was allowed to use this hand, I could come in and hit a key and then maybe give it some rotation and go down and do some squash stuff. But maybe it would be fun to do a video where I don't use a mouse at all and just animate probably just a cube, not a character. But the other hotkey that we set up, which was Alt and the Wazda keys, what these do and what they do by default in Maya, if we just take it over here and look at this cube. If you hit by default Alt and Up, you see it just nudges that up slightly in the viewport and at the same time if you hit the down key you just spam that down it just does that quite a nice thing to do sometimes is set a key and then just give it a little you can kind of move that using all of the keys but all i've done is just set this to asda and i can quite quickly come in and kind of just spam in a new position it's not super fast to do that obviously if i wanted to move this cube like a massive amount to do that by just doing the move tool will take a while but if you already have some defined animation so say i'm just easing to a stop here and i just want to create a little arc i can just follow that arc slightly down and up nudging it down what does this look like without stopping to explain myself every couple of seconds well i can go in and just quickly create an initial i'm gonna copy the key that i had before and do a little antic and then i'm gonna create my ease really spam that to get easing a bit less let's to feel like it's dragging as we go forward and I get some animation going. Hit another. And we are easy in on the other end. I actually kind of want to grab the rotation channels and just copy them from the last thing by pressing one quite a handy thing to do but we're kind of maintaining this, this color that we have <laughs> I don't know, it would kind of be fun to do like an up and then land into this, I feel. So let's kind of just create a random pose. Where's our final rotation? Uh, back, let's just copy that rotation again. And let's cheat that so that we go up and we're a totally different color. Let's scale it up a bit, see what happens. Okay, let's ease in, do this up. And you'll notice again, much like my last video, I'm not doing my timing just yet. I was just creating my spacing first and then going in later. It's going to be some weird switch route here, which I think could be quite fun. If we just go completely blue, it's going to be a good way to cheat it. I don't want to quite quickly get into that. And then I want to create a moving hold here. So we're just going to... Uh, the rotation is getting very broken right now, but... And I just want to move this along a bit. Again, I'm just going to nudge. It always moves it in screen space, which is very handy. This is now going to do that. I feel like I've got a bit away from my rotation. I'm just going to run an Euler filter. Hopefully this sorts out some of my rotations as I'm going through. Let's hit a breakdown. 
start to ease out and we probably want to do a nice big hit into the next one i'm gonna just take exactly what the next key is and squish them down and sort out some rotation so that we can go somewhere else with it do some spin into this final pose i think it could be cool fun to play with colored sphere for this but let's do a hit frame as well use the scale to find where that was Oof. yeah that's good hold it up there a bit longer oh, that could be more fun and if i go through this i'm just seeing like my arc is a bit broken I can just go in and nudge <laughs> just want to continue that jelly feel i think it's pretty cool i'm gonna go to the next frame let's overshoot again might be too much but we'll see let's see some of that yellow before we lose it completely I'm just thinking about easing this now into boink one more key <laughs> and you know what we'll keep going see so i've got a bunch of keys here now go through hold this and see once i've got keys in there i can go in and very quickly do some ease in and ease outs super quickly while i do that i'm going to do my timing as well i'm going to ease out into that Keep that rotation going there. Smash them through the floor. Keep that fast. Like that lands. Oh, let's push that smear. I'd like to give it some more room to go. I'm just going to nudge this back a bit. Boom. I really want to hit into that scale. I'm just going to blend to the next scale. Really smudging down. And bounce out of that quite quickly. Boink. So we need a little ease into that. I've just eased the scale there. Let's go on the translate and also ease into that. Or ease out to that cheat this want that yellow kind of coming through yeah okay let's play that through and see how we look okay it's a cool crazy cube and i can go in and i can tweak the timing i can go through and tweak the spacing as well quite easily what i would often do is Say I decided that this is easing a bit too much. I could just go in and go to my key and just blend it back to the previous frame, which is here. And at the same time, I can ease in more to the next frame. Ease this one out there. I can just tighten up my spacing quite quickly and say I want this one to be a little more like the next one. I can kind of come in and just do that. Yeah. It's very easy to go in and create something quite quickly, especially when you have breakdowns as well as key poses in there. Go in and add in ease ins and ease outs, which are the bulk of your animation and really provide a strong backbone to be able to just hit spline on something like this. Again, like we did with the last one, let's risk it all. Oil filter, because that is definitely needed. And I'm going to hit spline and we will see what happened there. Oh, I forgot to move this one. How did I miss that? I wonder if something was feeling weird. <laughs> Okay, we can't snap up even more there. I like to use it for moving holds as well. See at the end, I feel like he's moving a bit linearly or was moving a bit linearly through here. I just want to push that back and also add in another ease. Just gets a bit tighter at the end there, but there's still some motion. Watch that through. Uh, what is happening here? Do we have an Euler issue? Yeah. Oh, we did have an Euler issue. Okay, cool. So that is another cube animation. But this further explains the tween machine and blend to neighbors workflow feel like it's a great way to control your spacing and quite quickly set your eases and ease outs so that Maya isn't doing a ton of that in between work and you're doing that in between work. I'm sure there are corresponding hotkeys for Blender and maybe even some that would make your workflow even better than in Maya. You can take this and create the same thing in Blender if you want. If you do, let me know. Join the Discord, send links, send out tweets. Let people know, share your stuff. If you're doing Blender stuff, there's people out there who want that. Sharing is caring. If you're working on an animation and you'd like a second pair of eyes, you can check out my website, Keyframe Coach, where you can order a review. 
I'll take a look, upload it to the Keyframe Coach YouTube channel, and hopefully you'll get a better animation. Who knows? Like this video, share it with a friend. Other animators use this, but not many. Maybe we can make it more popular. Maybe we can help someone out by sharing it. Let me know what videos you guys want to see. I definitely want to work on being more active and posting more to the channel. Really building this into something going into next year. Just had a mince pie. It's very near to the end of the year. Thanks for watching and see you next time.